Hello everybody, this is Miss Hilligan, and today we are going to start our very first lesson of the summer math assignment. So grab your notebook, open up to the summer math assignment, next clean page, and title it Sets of Numbers. So you're about to see a couple of clips, and we want you to take notes, and then after you take notes, you're going to do a small problem set that we will post online. So let's start off with the definition of a set, and it is just a collection of unordered objects. For example, here I have a collection of erasers, so I have a set of erasers here, and if I have a subset, that means a set within the set, so I can say one of the subsets is just the hamster erasers. And if I wanted to denote a set on paper, meaning writing it down, I have to use the braces, the curly Q braces, to start and show the end of a set. Unions are the joining of all of the elements of two or more sets, and the intersection of the sets are the things that they have in common. So first off, I have an example of the set ABC, union, set AEIOU, and the resultant set of this is the combination of those two sets. So I have an A, a B, and a C, and then an E, an I, an O, and a U. And that set here is the union of those two sets. Now this upside down U stands for intersection, and it means what the two sets have in common. So if I want to find the intersection of those two sets, it's what they have in common, that overlapping section of a Venn diagram, and the resultant set is just A. Now if those two sets have nothing in common, then we need an empty set, which we can either denote by an empty set of curly Q braces, or we can use this symbol here, which is the symbol for the null set or the empty set. In this clip, I'm going to talk to you about the sets of numbers used in Algebra 1. Now this is going to be a quick overview, and if you'd like more information on any one of the individual sets that I'm going to be talking about, I refer you to Chapter 1 of the Algebra Nomicon, which will be linked to both this video and the in-class assignment. So let's begin. Primary set of numbers used in Algebra 1 is a set called the real numbers. Now whenever we want to refer to the set of real numbers, we say the set of real numbers, but we usually write this symbol. It's a capital R with an extra vertical bar, and that symbol is the symbol used to denote the set of real numbers. So whenever you see that, we're talking about the entire set of real numbers. And I will be using this rectangle to denote the set of real numbers. So inside this rectangle lives every single possible real number. And the real numbers are the numbers that you've been working with for years. So whole numbers, integers, digits, evens, odds, repeating decimals, terminating decimals, pi, those are all examples of real numbers. Now you may be asking yourself, well, if there are real numbers, does that mean there are also fake numbers too? And the answer is no, there are no such thing as fake numbers. However, there is a set of numbers called the complex numbers, which contains a subset called the imaginary numbers, which you don't learn about till Algebra 2, so you just have to wait. Now let's go back to the real numbers. There are really two different types of real numbers. You can be an irrational number, or you can be a rational number. Can't be both. You are either rational or irrational if you are a real number. Now the rational numbers are the ones you've worked with the most. They include whole numbers, they include the natural numbers, they include integers and terminating decimals and repeating decimals. These are all examples of rational numbers. And the definition of a rational number is a number that can be written as a ratio of integers. So whole numbers like five is an example of a rational number because you can write it as five over one. Natural numbers like seven can be written as a ratio of integers, mainly seven over one. And then of course we have the integers like negative three and negative 14 and 12. Those of course can all be written as ratios of integers. And then terminating decimals like 0.25 can be written as one-fourth, and then of course 0 0.3 repeating can be written as one-third. Now notice those ratios, oh my gosh, they're fractions. That's because fractions are rational numbers by definition. So that means, well, what's an irrational number? 
Well, an irrational number simply is a number that is not rational, meaning it cannot be written as a ratio of integers. So that's the key. Now, we can spot an irrational number because it has a non-terminating, meaning never-ending, non-repeating decimal. And the most famous example of which is pi. Pi is an example of an irrational number because it cannot be written as a ratio of integers. And don't be fooled, 22 over 7 is an approximation of pi, not the actual value of pi. And it is non-terminating, which means it never ends, and non-repeating because there's no blocks that repeat over and over again that we know of. And therefore, it is irrational. That's not the only irrational number, though. We actually don't work with pi a lot in Algebra 1. The irrational numbers we work with a lot in Algebra 1 are the roots, like the square root of 2 is an example of an irrational number because it has a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal and cannot be written as a ratio of integer. So the square root of 2, the square root of 5, the square root of 6, the square root of 8, those are all examples of irrational numbers, and those are the ones we're going to work with the most. Now, roots are not limited to square roots. You can also have cube roots and fourth roots and fifth roots. So we know by definition, that if I take the square root of 2 and I square it, I'm going to get 2 back, right? Because the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. Well, there are these things called cube roots, and cube roots are written like this, with a 3, the check mark for the radical, and then some number. This is the cube root of 4, and by definition, if I take the cube root of 4 and I cube it, meaning multiply it by itself three times, I'm going to get 4. And that's not the only kind of root. We can have any kind of root we want. We can have a seventh root of eight, which means that if I raise that number to the seventh power, I'm going to get eight. And all of these numbers live inside the irrational numbers because they cannot be written as a ratio of integers. Now, not all roots are irrational because if I look at the square root of four, the square root of four is two, which can be written as 2 over 1, and that is rational. So just because something has a root does not mean it's irrational. You have to check inside to make sure that it indeed is irrational. How about the cube root of 8? Well, the cube root of 8 is looking for a number that when you multiply it by itself three times, you're going to get 8, and that is also 2. Now, a quick and easy way to check if a number is irrational or rational is to use a calculator or some sort of calculating device. Because if you get a non-terminating, a non-repeating decimal, you will have an irrational number. But if you get something that can be written like a fraction, like one fourth or one third, then you have a rational number. And these are the two primary types of numbers that we work with in Algebra 1. And they all belong to the set that we call the real numbers.